Welcome to another edition of Tasker 101 Tutorials brought to you by HollywoodFrodo.com. This is lesson number 27 and today we're going to show you how to create a uh, pop-up notification for Google uh, Now Reminders. Um, before we get started on how to do it, let me show you how it works. I'm sorry to interrupt you Eric, but you have a new Google Now Reminder. It's time to do an Android tutorial for Tasker. Okay, so that is what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you exactly how to create a uh, pop-up for Google Now. Uh, so when you get a reminder from Google Now, you'll get a pop-up. Uh, we already talked about how to read out Google Now uh, reminders in a, in a previous lesson. This is going to sort of piggyback on that and show you how to add the pop-up using scenes as well. So let's get right to it. So as you can see, that uh, uh, pops up a nice little pop-up that'll stay on your screen. That way, even if you have the audible uh, reminder or not, you can have that or not have that, but maybe you don't hear that or if your phone's on silent mode, you're not gonna get that. And so uh, next time you look at your phone, that reminder will be right there on the top of your screen. Um, of course, you always have the notification reminder here, but sometimes, uh, if you're like me, I ignore my notifications if I get a lot of them or I don't check them for a while and the pop-up, usually if I'm leaving myself a reminder, it's something I really want to remember. So the pop-up uh, kind of works better for that. So this is a, uh, a profile that we created in a previous lesson. I've modified it a little bit. Basically, we the profile trigger is notification and then choose the app Google and uh, Let's just look at that real quick. So on our app is Google, title, I'm leaving that empty because I want it to trigger regardless. And then I added a condition not on a call. So I uh, selected state and then uh, a phone call and then inverted that to mean not on a phone call because I don't want uh, this particular thing to trigger if I'm on a phone call. Now, uh, again, the reason I said that is because I'm having this also announce the uh, uh, announce the uh, reminder as well. Um, if I didn't uh, have the announcement, then I might have it trigger even if I was on a phone call um, to have that pop up. That's up to you. You can do that if you want to. Um, and then if we look at the task, right now we have variables set. We set uh, a new variable that we created, G now, to end title. And that's because it is good practice anytime you're using information from the notification title that the very first thing you do is take that information and plug it into a different variable. Why do you do that? Because that could change. If another notification comes up right after that notification, then entitle is going to change to the new one. Entitle is always the most recent notification. So when you're triggering uh, something uh, using entitle, best thing to do is as soon as it's triggered, if you're going to use that information, then transfer that information over to a variable that won't change until you change it. So we're setting the user variable G now to entitle, and uh, you should know how to do that from previous lessons. And then I have a say uh, where it speaks out the Google Now reminder. Um, so it's just basically saying the reminder is, and then it speaks the variable which we created that contains the information from the notification. So now we're going to create the uh, pop-up. So we're going to go over to scenes and we are going to create a new scene and I'm going to call this 101 G now and first thing I'm going to do is decide I want it to be yeah. I want it to be too big, but I want it to be pretty big and right in the middle of my of my screen. And uh, uh, you can see, um, I'm going to change the shading of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, long press here. I'm going to press menu. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select properties. And here's where you go, background color. You can also select orientation. In other words, you could have it always be in landscape, always be in portrait, or be based on uh, the system or the sensor, whatever you want it to do. Uh, I'm gonna have it uh, be system, so it can be either way. 
um, property type I'm gonna leave it as a dialog and then background color here's where we can choose our color I'm going to choose sort of a muted gray color like that there we go and now I'm going to hit the little magnifying glass what that does is make it so that you can now add stuff to it, it says long click to add an element you can long click on there or you can just hit the plus button let's hit the plus button and I'm going to say uh, text and I'll leave the name as it is I'm going to say Google now reminder and text size probably going to be a little bit bigger I'm going to say like 37, 36, sounds good. We can go back and change that if we want to. I'll scale the width a little bit. Text color, I'm going to make the text color white, which it actually already is, so that's perfect. Font, I'm going to leave it the normal font that I use. And then I'm going to go to background. Uh, no shader, using shader would not be considered material design but color obviously if you've read anything about material design you basically it's about bright bold colors so uh, you know it could be a bold orange a bold yellow a really bold blue let's do that blue um, we're not going to have any borders again that would probably be considered anti-material design uh, you know, material design is kind of, I call it a fad, you know, it's what's cool right now because it's some new way of looking at things, but it's not like it's never been done before, and five years from now, it'll probably be considered passe, and there'll be some whole new quote-unquote perfect design, so it's just the way it works. Uh, so as you can see, I'm trying to get this over there and I can't, so of course I can press the little hand and change it to resize, and then I can use my resizers to make sure that it's all the way across. Now I could make this smaller, make it all on one line, but I'll just leave it like that because I'm happy with it. And I think this is plenty of room for the actual reminder. Go back to normal mode. Uh, you can click that to see what it's going to look like, and you can see it's just a very simple bar at the top, no borders or anything, no shading, just bright colors. That kind of gives it that material design look. You can play with that some more if you want to, to give it the look that you want. And now we're going to add one more text box. Text. Now this text is going to be our uh, variable that we just created. Percent G now. I want to make the size, we'll make it like probably 20, probably 20 is good. I'll leave everything else the same. As far as color goes, I'm going to make this black because it's going to be black on gray, which is easy to read. And I set it to be centered so it'll be in the center and you see when you get the pop-up this is exactly what it will look like minus the little gray dotted lines which is just to help you in uh, task or scenes to create the scenes so I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go back and you see it's there now we're gonna go back to this task that we created Actually, go back to the profile. It's going to be easier for me to find there. Here we are, 101 Gmail Auto Speak. And in this task, I'm going to add an action. We're going to say Scene. I'm going to say Show Scene. Um, we're going to click the magnifying glass so we can find it. And we have 101 Gmail, which we just created. And then we get to decide how we want to. Uh, display it. Uh, I'm not going to display it as an overlay, I'm going to display it as a uh, dialogue and I'm going to dim behind. 
uh, you can choose what you want for that but that's I dialogue is easy if you want it to go away you can just press the back button and it goes away I like the dim behind because it makes it stand out I'm gonna leave show exit button checked even though with the dialogue that's not a big concern but I still recommend always leaving show exit button selected until you have confirmed that you have other ways to make it go away otherwise you could be stuck with something on your screen that you don't want on your screen so if I click the play button and test this out. The remainder is. It's time to do an Android tutorial for Tasker. And there you go. It pops up and there's our reminder. There's our box. Now, like I said, the only way to get rid of this right now is to hit the back button. Really easy, but we might want to add a way to get rid of it. If we select, uh, uh, go back to scenes, we can open this scene and we can do a little more with it I don't like the way that box is kind of somehow resized itself but let's fix that yeah that's good uh, let's go back to normal so I'm going to tap this to open it I'm going to select tap and I'm going to give it an action so if we tap I'm going to say scene destroy scene it's generally automatically populated with the scene you're working on and that is what I want and then I'm going to do the same thing with the text open the text tap add activity scene destroy scene the scene all right so now If we test the task out, the remainder is. It's time to do an Android tutorial for Tasker. Now we can get rid of the scene simply by tapping it, because that destroys the scene. So that's all there is to it. It's very simple. Uh, everything we did here is using principles we've used in many lessons. So you probably could have figured this out for yourself, but I'm finding that. People tend to skip around lessons just looking for things they want to do sometimes. So uh, this might have helped you in some small way, hopefully so. Uh, if you like this uh, lesson, please click that like button. You know anyone who might want to add this, then they can do that. Um, I will say one person kind of wanted to know if there's a way to only have Tasker do this if the reminder is an actual reminder because as this is any Google Now reminder any Google Now notification is going to trigger this and Google Now as you might know sometimes it has a notification to let you know there's a traffic accident or how long it's going to take to get to work the only way to do that and there is a way to do it and that's if you uh, uh, if you put a word in all of your actual reminders, a keyword, and then under the notification Google, under the uh, trigger, you could have that uh, keyword in, in between two asterisks, and then this would only trigger if that keyword was in the notification. So you'd have to like have all of your Google Now reminders start with the word reminder or whatever you want it to be, whatever keyword you want it to use. So you could do that and you could play around with that if you only want this to trigger when it's an actual Google Now reminder and not when it's a Google Now notification about something else. So that's something you can play around with. Anyway, that's it for this lesson. Click the like button, share it with everyone you know, to check out my uh, channel, and subscribe to this playlist for all the Tasker tutorials. But subscribe to my channel if you want to check out over 150 Android app reviews, really cool, amazing apps over there. And also, I do a lot of product reviews focusing mostly on electronics and gadgets and Android phone accessories, but also household products and you know, even have a dog product review list so you can check those out as well. Anyway, that is it until next time. So have fun with Tasker.